Good evening, Embassy. Hello and welcome to the new Embassies of Christ online campus. We have made our online campus better and simpler for our new members and guests. Let's check on some of the new features. Become more interactive with the service and utilize our notes and Bibles tab. Here you can take notes of the sermon. When finished, at the bottom is an email option where you can email them to yourself for review. There is also a Bible added so you can read along in the Word with us. Connect with us via social media and share with us your thoughts about the service using the Facebook tab. If you have any problems with your online experience, feel free to email our team at support at eocstreaming.com. Thank you for tuning in with us. Now prepare to have your life changed forever. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we give you all the glory. Father, we give you all the praise. You are worthy of the glory. You are worthy of the praise. We lift our hands and we clap our hands and we move our feet because you are worthy of the glory. You are worthy. Hallelujah. So it is our privilege that we clap our hands. We clap our hands.
victory. We thank you for victory and healing. We thank you for victory and deliverance. We thank you that we are set free and delivered. Oh, oh. Hallelujah. God, we honor you. There is no one above you. You are a great God. you father we honor you God you are a great God there is no one like you hallelujah and we worship you and we lift our hands before you and we honor and adore you hey oh, oh.
Hallelujah. 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 Stay right there. underneath the sound of my voice, could you stretch your hands to heaven on tonight? I don't know about y'all, I like to keep it real. Some of us ain't talked to God all day, now is the time. So before we sing anything else, before we say anything else, open up your mouth and begin to bless your God. Let's not take these moments, this atmosphere for granted. Come on, lift your hands. Yes, God. time around. Come on, if you're free, come on, open up your mouth and begin to worship your king. All my free people, come on.
say chasing after you Stretch forth your hands and I receive my healing. Right there on my knees, oh God. One more time, say it again. Say, I stretch out my hands to touch the healing.
when your presence comes. Say, Christ be revealed. If this you lift your hand and say, break every day. Uh -huh. hey. Break every day. Oh. Say, break. situation has to change immediately at the mention of the day. I'm changed in an instant at the mention of your day. I'm no longer bound. I'm set free, God. Now rush to this altar, everybody underneath the sound of my voice in this room. Yes. The only name I want you to focus on right now is the name of Jesus.
one thing about the woman with the issue of blood, she didn't care who she had to go through to get to Jesus. And some of you are in that situation right now. Does it doesn't matter who's on your left and who's on your right. Put the blinders on and begin to press right now in this atmosphere. And if you got to get on your knees, your highest place should be at the foot of the cross. Your highest place should be at his feet. If you got to get on your knees to touch the hem of his garment, to receive your healing, get on your knees and pray and cry out of his place.
Hello everyone, I'm Autry Phillips and this is the good news. We've just finished the first month in this new year. Now let's take a look at our recap. January was amazing. Now, as we go into February, let's check out our events. The Pathway to Purpose Black History Exhibit is open today through February 28th. View how God has brought the African Americans from slavery to now. See how we have overcome the devil's attacks and emerged victoriously. You don't want to miss this awesome exhibit. Admission is free, so bring everyone you know. We'll see you there. Please remember to sign in either in the kiosk in the foyer or by texting this number below. Please remember that we are one body, one family. Join Pastor Joy Oliver for True Love Waits starting February 7th in the gym. 
Are you interested in investing in property? If so, there's an informational on tax sale properties held February 13th at 6 o'clock. For more information, please visit the concierge table. Come and be a part of G3. We are going to pass out door hangers and invite people to food for you. We will be going to the Park Shore Housing Community on Saturday, February 17th at 2 p.m. Join us as we bring the good news to the Park Shore Housing Community. We encourage everyone to bring your grandparents on a day that is dedicated to them. You're going to have an amazing day. It is February 25th. Head on both services. We look to see you there. Join Dr. Joyce Oliver for Facebook and Periscope Prayer on February 17th at 9 a.m. Experience powerful prayer with Dr. Joyce Oliver. You can participate by downloading the Periscope app and following Dr. Cedric underscore Joyce. Get ready for Facebook and Periscope Prayer on February 17th at 9 a.m. February is the month of love, so share this Facebook Live and tag your loved ones so that they are aware of what's going on. Today we want to have a hundred shares. Get ready to party and celebrate love. Join us for a Valentine's after party on February 14th. We will have food, fun, and a live DJ and so much more. Bring a date or just bring a few friends and party with your EOC family on February 14th after service. February 11th is the time that we're dedicating for our new members reception. This is an opportunity for you to meet both our pastors and other leaders. I really look forward to seeing you there. If you haven't been to a worship night this year, you are missing out. Join us on February 28th for a night of worship with special guest Sarah Robinson. The heavens will be open on Wednesday, February 28th at 7 p.m. It is God's will for us to have long life and life more abundantly. Join us February 17th for Healing Sunday. Come encounter God's healing power through powerful teaching from Dr. Cedric Oliver. And during service, he will be laying hands on the sick. Meet us at Embassies of Christ for Healing Sunday for both services. This week's Bible reading. 1 John 5.4 for whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Well, that has been our good news. For more information, you can check out our bulletin, or you can visit us at eocchurch.com. Until then, you have a super productive day. Father, we just come before you right now in the name of your son, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this awesome, awesome, beautiful weather. And Father, we thank you for this time tonight that I'll speak only those things that you have me speak. And Lord, we thank you that healing and deliverance is going to come from this word, that our faith will grow. And Lord, we'll be more pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, Satan is bound in every demonic spirit. If you're in agreement, say amen. amen. You can be seated. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. I thank God for you guys following our staff office in instructions and kind of staying close, pulling in towards the center. And I know some of you had to give, give up your perfect favorite seats, but I hope you don't have an attitude because you don't get to sit in your favorite seat anymore. Everybody say, we are one. We are one. I just want to reinforce some announcements. We're going to encourage everybody when you come in, sign in. You'll see members sign in so that we can stay in contact with you. And let's do some shout outs on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook about the uh, powerful things God is doing here at EOC. You know, there's somebody that out there that needs to know what's going on in this church. 
it'll be a blessing to them. How many of you have been blessed by being here? Praise God. This coming Sunday, we're going to have our new members reception. If you, praise God, come on, praise God for that. If you joined the Embassies of Christ within the last couple of months or so, come on out after second service. We're going to have a reception for you. You're going to get to meet Dr. C and I and the leaders of this church and just some more information about being a member. Let's praise God for our new members. Our married couples are having a masquerade party. What are we calling it? Masquerade Jazz Night. And it's on the 20th, it's going to be on the 23rd. Uh, there are tickets for sale, but they're very inexpensive. And you can get those tickets at the bookstore. Let's thank God for what God is doing with the married couples. And then next Wednesday, because it's, we're going to have church on Valentine's Day, uh, we're going to have an after set. Okay, in the foyer, we're going to have a dessert table, we're going to have music, and just be able to hang out right after service. So make sure you come next Wednesday. How many of you have seen our Pathway to Purpose exhibit? Raise your hand if you've seen it. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it excellent? And we, we give you the Bible version of black history. So go out there and make sure you take part and, and take a look at it. And, of course, our youth are doing True Love Weights in the gym. And if there are any uh, teenagers, any teenagers in the house, if you're a teenager, we want to dismiss you at this time to go uh, into the gym. Let's thank God for all of, our teen, all of our teenagers. Thank God for them as they go to the gym. Come on, you need that message. Y'all need that message. You need to go to the gym. Let's thank God for them as they're exiting to the gym. Come on, encourage them. a note that there's going to be on February the 13th what day of the week is that Tuesday an informational meeting on tax sale to purchase a home on tax sale if you're interested in that please go to that meeting uh, it'll be here at the church at 6 p.m. all right and you'll see we make it convenient for you to become a member how many of you know this church is blessed this is a blessed church. We thank God for all you beautiful, loving, perfect people. At, look at your neighbor. Say, are you perfect? I'm not telling the truth. <laughs> By faith in the spirit. But we one big happy family. And y'all know we got all kinds of folks in a family, right? You know, we got auntie, uncle, the crazy uncle. Come on. We got all kinds of people, but you know what? God loves us all. Amen. And we love each other. And EOC is a good church. And here's what I want to say to you. I wouldn't belong to a church that didn't teach you that you could be healed. Mm -mm. That's life or death there. Because when Satan comes to attack my body, I want some faith in my heart for healing. Oh yeah. I wouldn't belong to a church that didn't teach me that God wants me to prosper. Because I don't want to be broke and I can't help nobody if I'm broke. I don't want to belong to a church that don't teach you the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I'm sorry. God gave us a gift and I'm going to use that gift. I'm going to pray in the spirit to let devil back up off my stuff. I don't know about you. When it comes to knowing kingdom living, you want to belong to a place that's going to teach you about kingdom living. I wouldn't belong to a church where the pastor didn't love you and didn't have integrity. Why am I saying that? Because there's somebody in here that hasn't joined the church, doesn't even belong to a church. And I'm telling you, 
this is a good place to be. Because there's not many churches that teach kingdom living, okay? And the anointing starts with the head and it rolls down. Amen? You got to be connected. You can't just come and sample. You got to be connected to the anointing. So I encourage you to become a member. And at EOC, we make it convenient for you. There's a card in your bulletin that says, I'd like to become a member. And all you have to do is fill that card out, drop, drop it in the offering bucket, and someone will be in contact with you about your membership orientation class. Let's thank God for all of our new members. We've got some very special prayer requests tonight that we've got to deal with. So I would like to meet with all of our intercessors for about five minutes after service kind of uh, emergency kind of intercession that has to go on. So if you guys would meet with me after service for about five minutes, I'd appreciate it. Let's thank God for all of our prayer warriors and intercessors. I'd like to take this time to welcome our online members and guests. Let's give them a hand. And I'd like to acknowledge some very important people. And those are our first time guests. If this is your first time to an Embassies of Christ worship service, We'd like to acknowledge you. We promise we're not going to ask you to do anything. We just want to acknowledge you. If you just please stand at this time so we can just say welcome and uh, thank God for you being here. Let's thank God for our first-time guests as they stand. Welcome, welcome. Our staff officers have a yellow packet, and in that packet is some information about our ministry. Uh, if you take that card, information card in that packet, and fill it out at the end of service, if you look to my right, and you're left with a couple of standing. That's our hospitality center. We'll dismiss you to go there after service where they have another gift, some refreshments, and they'll tell you more about the ministry. And then there's going to be a drawing, and someone will receive a restaurant gift certificate. Let's thank God for our first time guests. I thank God for all of your faithfulness of being here. But I want to encourage you to bring someone to service with you. I want you to have an eternal view of life. And the truth is that only the things that are done for God are going to last. And so what's most important to God is increase, increase of his kingdom. God's got a lot of kids out there. What I mean by that are human beings that don't know him yet. Or they may have heard of Jesus. Or they may go to a religious church where they're not teaching things that I just listed to you. And you're coming and getting this good word, but we shouldn't be satisfied to come by ourselves. Amen? Come on, you can give me a hand clap anyway. And if Jesus was to come tonight, he'd want to know how many souls or people you had brought into the kingdom. It's all about the kingdom. And many of us would just be standing before God saying, well, I brought myself. Okay, but we understand that that's not enough for God. And every time we have a service where we introduce our first-time guests, and every time there's only one or two first-time guests, what is that saying? That we're not all doing our part. But we can do better. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, we can do better. Say, I know somebody that could benefit from this word. And if God helps me, and he will help me, I'm going to invite them to come with me. Come on, let's praise God for that. We have these little cards in the bulletin that you can pass out to people just to invite them to church. So I want to encourage you to do that. Be, be restless, not uh, feel uncomfortable. When I say visitors stand, and there are not many standing, I want you to be uncomfortable with that. All right? Everybody, let's praise God for that. Well, guess what time it is? It's harvest time. Let's praise God for his harvest. Hallelujah. Harvest time. Praise God. I thank God for those of you who are coming to so into Dr. Cedric in my life. And we thank God that God will supply your every need according to his riches in glory. And every good and perfect gift is looking for you to overtake you. 
and money will be given to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and run, running over what God sent others to give you wealth. If you're looking for a harvest, you're going to have to plant some seed. And your offering is your seed. I don't think anybody has ever went to a bucket, uh, a planter, and just looked at the dirt and said, boy, I wish a plant would come out of that dirt. We all know you got to plant a seed to get a harvest. Amen? So we thank God that those of you who understand when you bless a prophet, you shall receive a prophet's reward. We thank God that there is anointing all my life, and I believe in God for everybody that comes in souls and gives a gift to Dr. Cedric and I that you're going to see the harvest from it. Come on, how many of you already seen a harvest from it? Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Dr. C and I, we sow into our man and woman of God. We sow into Bishop Hilliard, and we've been blessed on top of blessed. Let's thank God for blessing those who teach you and bless you in the gospel. Let's give one more hand clap of praise for that. Now, we're getting ready to do the offering. Before we do, here's what I want to do. I want to I want to let you know and inform you how rich you are tonight. Come on. It may not look like it, but don't be tricked by what the devil is showing you. You are rich. Well, you say, well, Pastor Jay, I feel broken and broke. Well, he's deceiving, and he's coming to attack your manifestation. But I'm going to teach you tonight how to overcome that joker. Tonight, <laughs> God has a plan for you, and he has a plan to prosper you. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Here's what the scripture says. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Now, if God is planning to prosper you, who's going to stop him? Nobody but you. The only person that can stop him from prospering you is you. If you don't believe you're prosperous, guess what? You're not. But if you believe you are, you are prosperous. Because he plans to prosper you. You should get excited. If I told you somebody is planning to come and give you $1,000, would you be happy? Well, you should be happy right now because God plans to prosper you. And the scripture says that he's so serious about it, he said he's got to, sw he's, he's going to swear that he's going to do it. And when he got ready to swear, he said, wait a minute. I can't find nobody to swear by higher than myself. Then he said, you know what? I got to swear by myself. Then guess what he said? I swear to God, I'm going to bless you. We got that from Cynthia Brazelton. Look at your neighbor and say, God said he swear to God, he going to bless you. And if God swear by himself, you better believe he's going to do it. Say, I'm blessed. I'm rich. Money, come to me now from heaven. My money is stored in the heavenly bank. bank. And he promised to throw open the windows of heaven. Call me out so much blessing. I won't have room enough to receive it. Now, when you go to the bank of heaven, you don't wait in line. There is no line in the bank of heaven. All you do is look up and say, God, where my money at? <laughs> and then here's what happens. When you go to God and petition him for your money that's already in your account, he's, you don't have to wait in line. You don't need a receipt. He says, when you come, if you're a tither, everybody say, if you're a tither, he said, I'm going to go open the windows of heaven. And then they're just going to start throwing money. When you like a bank like that, when you go, the teller just throws open the window, start throwing money at you. That's pretty good. Amen. We're thanking God. He has plans to prosper you, but you're going to have to be a sower. You got to be a giver. Why do we give? Because number one, when you give and tithe, 
that establishes God as Lord over your finances. So in the courts of heaven, he can say, this person has trusted me with their money by giving back 10%, by being a giver, and so I have the right to bless them and rebuke Satan from stealing from them. How many want God to rebuke Satan from stealing from you? Ain't nobody supposed to be taking nothing from you. Nothing in your house is supposed to be breaking down. You're not supposed to be losing anything. And if that's heaven, if that's happening, you need to start rebuking the devil. Come on, rebuke him. Say, I rebuke you, Satan. Because I'm a tither. Pray. Come on, give God praise for that. Now we're going to take a little blessing break. And here's what we're going to do. If you do not have gas money, come up here right now. If you don't have gas money, come up here. If you're ashamed, you ain't going to get it. If you're ashamed, you ain't going to get nothing. I need somebody bold. Come on up here. Stand right here. Come on up here. Be bold. All right. Okay, I need somebody to come and give each one of these ladies $50. You, you got $50 to give. Maybe you got 10, maybe you got 20, okay? But till, till they get 50. Come on, let's thank God. Start now. Okay, you got your 50, you can be seated. Praise God. You got your 50? All right, it's done. Thank you. Okay, you need some gas money? Girl, you're too slow. You too slow. See now, next time. Okay, that's it. You got 50? All right, let's thank God for this. Now we'll deal with the straggler spirit. And let me say this when we call for the blessing, don't wait till everybody else can come up. Because, see, you're going to lose out. When you hear it, just come on up. All right, next time we're going to say, just go on back because you waited too late. And the same thing with prayer, prayer line. Sometimes we had a prayer line, and then you wait till everybody been prayed for, and then you come up. Really? That's what you call diva prayer. I'm waiting for everybody else to pray, and then I'm going to come up to get my prayer. No, you come up when everybody else is coming up, and you're going to be blessed. Let's thank God for them. If you need an offering envelope, raise your hand. Those of you who sold, look for your harvest for that. Look for your harvest. If you need an offering envelope, those of you on the Internet, you can give text 321-1306 or you can get online our site is secure there should be some envelopes in the bulletin but if you don't have one our staff officers will wait on you you can make all checks payable to EOC come on let's give God our best let's be tithers if you haven't started tithing make a decision to tithe tonight praise God go ahead praise team Hello and welcome to Embassies of Christ Online Giving. We have made giving online very simple for our members and guests. Simply click the Give Online button below and then click on the Click to Give button and you will be directed to our giving portal. If this is your first time giving, click the first time button on the left and fill out the required information. In a rush? Need a quicker way to give? Use the Quick Give option. Just enter in your amount, select the category of giving, and enter in your card information. Thank you for taking the time to give online. Turn the air on. Make it colder. Turn the air. 
deep down, hold your office up before the Lord. Repeat after me and say, Father God, I thank you that everything I have came from you. I thank you that Jesus became poor so that I become rich. I thank you that I have a heavenly bank account and I'm pulling on it now. I'm a tither, I'm a giver, and I thank you for throwing up the windows of heaven, pouring me out so much blessing. I won't have room enough to receive it. Thank you, Father, for my harvest from the seed I'm sowing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, praise him for it. Come on, you can do better praise him than that. If you praise him based on how much you get back, how much you gonna praise him? Praise God for our anointed praise team, music minister, staff officers, and security. Well, tonight is healing and deliverance night. And I really want you guys to walk in healing. Amen. Amen. I want you guys to stop listening to all this junk on the news about the flu. Turn that stuff off. It does not line up with the word of God. God's not telling you the flu is coming to you. His word doesn't say that. We're not in the world system. And I'm telling you, we have to be uh, prepared because we are living in the last days. And the Bible tells us that in the last days, there's going to be all kinds of plagues on the earth. And if we don't start using our faith now for a flu, when the real plague comes, see, the only ones that are not going to be the, affected are the ones that got faith. Just because you got a Christian badge, that don't mean nothing. You're going to have to believe God when they say it's going around. Now, if you had some symptoms, that's not for you to feel condemned. Because we've all been attacked with symptoms. But I'm saying this as a word of encouragement to you. Amen? And so we want to I want to encourage you to use your faith and stop listening to all those bad reports. And then when people around you start talking crazy, when they start saying, I got the flu, you know what's going on, you need to walk away. Because you don't need to be listening to that. Because when Satan brings that suggestion to you, that first suggestion in your mind, if you're not on your game faith-wise, you can receive that thought. And once he's all, see, he brings the suggestion to have permission to attack you. 
And when he brings the thought, if you reject him, he has no grounds to attack your body. I cannot tell you how many times I've been sitting somewhere and I feel something, a little something in my nose, a little something in my body. And he'll, he'll tell me, and I'll say, oh, don't even try it. I tell him, don't you even try it. And he tries to sneak it in there when you distract it. But God. But God. Matthew 17 and 20. Matthew 17 and 20. If you have faith as, a, as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. And I read from the NIV translation. Now this scripture is the key faith scripture. And the first word in that verse is if. That word if means you could have faith or it's possible you don't. You could have faith or it's possible you don't if you have faith. And if you don't, I want to know why you don't have faith. If you don't have faith, it's possible that you have not been in the word of God. If you don't have faith, it's possible that you haven't been reading the word of God. If you don't have faith, it's possible that that scripture that comes on the announcements every week, that you don't pay any attention to it at all. If you don't have faith, it's possible that you spend three hours watching TV and no time listening to the word. If you don't have faith, it's possible that they have to beg you to come to church. They have to drag you out to come to church. They have to have a good contest for you to come to church, a good giveaway if you don't have faith, it's possible you're a priester. If you know what a priester is, people come to church only on Christmas and Easter. See, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you're going to get faith by coming to hear the word. That's why the devil tried to trick you into staying home. Oh, no problem, Dr. J. I'm going to sit at home and look at my computer, my phone. That's good. That's better than nothing. But you miss an exponential anointing. You're underestimating the anointing in the room. Look at your neighbor and say, you know I'm anointed, don't you? You know sparks is coming from me. Passing down the aisle. And that ain't coming over no computer. So he'll trick you into, you know. I mean, you know, when you're at a play, being at a play is different from seeing a movie. It's like it's live. If you have faith, if you, not your friend, not your mama, not the preacher, if you, it's going to come a time when you're going to have to get some faith. Now, you can lean on the pastor for a while when you first get saved. Baby Christians, mm-hmm. Pray for me, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. Good, good, that's good. But there's going to come a day. There's coming a day when he catch you in the middle of the night and ain't nobody there. And you have had chance after chance to come and hear the word, but you had to go shopping. And you had a party to go to. And you had to buy into all your family's drama. Every time they had some drama, you had to be there. They fighting. Oh, I got to go over there, you know, work it out with them. No, it's Sunday. Let them fight till you get home. Uh, they coming in town. Don't come in town on Sunday. Come see me on Monday. Oh, y'all, come on, come on. 
we got to have a party. You better have it on Saturday, uh, Monday through Saturday then. Why you have a party on Sunday? I got to stay home and cook for my party. Say, if you, you better start building your faith up. We are living in the last days. I don't want to be weak in faith. I don't know about you. I've always wanted to be on top in my class. Everybody say, if you. If you have, that means it's established. That means you ain't trying to get faith. The worst thing in the world is when a big attack comes, then you're going to try to get some faith. <laughs> That's called cramming. How many of you ever cram for a test? Some of y'all are expert crammers. Some of y'all not so much. You cannot put a roof on a house in the middle of the storm. Have you drove down the streets and seen these houses with these blue tarps? It ain't temporary. They've been there ten, two years. They ain't put that roof on yet. Come on, it's time to get your faith established, rooted on the rock, practiced, tried and true, proofed. It's been proven. David said, my faith has been proven. When the bear came, I handled him. When the lion came, I handled the lion. He had proven faith. So when he faced Goliath, he was not trembling because he had proved his faith. Some of us haven't even overcome a headache and don't know they're going to try to put some cancer on you. You better get your faith established now. Come on, praise God. If you have faith, if you have faith, Faith. What is faith? Trust in God alone. Alone. You ain't trusting in your bank account. Somebody got $20,000 in the bank, and you think you Donald Trump. You feeling so good and secure. Your bills are paid, and you got 20 you have no idea. You better trust in God and not in that bank account. Hallelujah. I'm not speaking anything negative, but if our trust is in something other than God, Satan can come and steal it. You trusting in your relatives... They're going to be there for you? Probably not in this generation. Trust in God alone. Don't trust in yourself. Some of y'all think y'all can handle any problem. You problem solvers. I have to watch myself on that. God will be like telling me, um, Will you stop trying to fix their problem for them? But see, I know this happened before God, and I could tell him this. He was like, wait, I'm God. Will you let me be their God? Will you teach them to rely on me instead of you? I'm like, okay, God. But it was out of love. It was out of love. I was trying to help him. He was like, yeah, but you're not helping them. Because they ain't going to do nothing but turn on you, no, Joyce. You help a lot of people. Satan moves in. They get angry. And they stab you. Then you got to go. Get healed. <laughs> I did everything and I was helping them and I loved them. And I ministered to them and I remember when they came there and they had nothing. And I was there night and day with them. And this is how they going to treat me. He said, yep. And now you got to forgive them. And then get all healed so somebody else can stab you. What? 
kind of foolishness is this? He said, didn't they stab me? Are you better than me? Just a sidebar. Some of y'all are hard-hearted because you've been hurt so many times. And we can relate. We can understand the problem with that is God can't talk to you because God is love. And you've given up on love. So there's a distance between you and him. Because so many people didn't hurt you and you didn't stop and take the time to get healed. Well, how do I do that, Dr. J? Get quiet. Stop being so busy. Sit down for a couple of days and talk to God and worship him until he has cleansed you from all unrighteousness. You thought unrighteousness was the sins you did. No, it's the sins of others you kept. Let him cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Stop walking around with all that junk in your spirit and God can't get through to you. We should be like leave it to beaver up in here. When the unchurch, the rock good unchurch, y'all know what I mean, what I mean by that. They, they don't mean you no good, but they need Jesus. And when they come up in here, we should be like, leave it to Beaver. Hey, brother, can we help you? Want to go to dinner? Can we show some love on you? Can we hug you? Yeah, just take somebody with you. Can we love you? Do you need anything? Can we get you a suit? Your wife has kids. You know, does she need any clothes for? It should be that kind of spirit up in here. Come on, I'm trying to wake up the love in you, but you're going to have to let go of all that pain. Now people come up in here off the street, and they come in like, who are you? Where are you going? How you gonna sit? You, you can't sit on the front row. That's my seat. But it's time for us to to be that loving. You know, you gotta trust to love. Some of y'all ain't married, ain't gonna get married, cause you don't trust nobody. I get it. The last one did you pretty bad truth be told, we just need some wisdom how to love somebody. We need to stop being afraid to love people and, and just learn how to love people. I understand the devil is plotting. I understand that he's trying to hurt. I understand he uses people to hurt you, but we can't stop loving. We can't give up on love because of what he's doing. Trust in God alone, not in yourself. And if you, if you have faith, as small as a mustard seed, you know, a seed is very small, but it's got great potential. Think about what's in one apple seed. It's not just one tree. In one apple seed is a perpetual planting of orchards in one seed it has potential to never end and that is the seed of faith if you sow it in your heart and water it with the word of God it can grow to be so great that you can handle any attack that the enemy brings into your life. The truth be told, we should be walking faith giants. We should be so powerful, we should be kicking down demons. 
our problem is we're kind of stumped that we're in a war. Our problem is we're in the middle of a battle and we're crying because bullets are flying. He's coming for you. You're in a war. So yes, they're going to say negative things about you. So... What are you going to do, stand there and cry? What did they do? They were after Jesus all the time, weren't they? What did Jesus said at the synagogue? And Peter came and said, Lord, what's wrong? <laughs> I'm just tired because the Pharisees is always put me down. They don't respect my ministry. And, I, you know, I'm just giving up on this thing. I, I didn't have it. They always trying to lie on me. They lying on me, saying that I'm not supporting the commandments. And I do support the commandments. I do. What if you had to counsel Jesus? They don't like me. Really? You in a war. They trying to kill you. There's a lot of potential in a seed, but once you grow it, it can do great things. There is not supposed to be anything in your life that stays that's against you. Okay? If somebody's sleeping next to you, give them the elbow and say they're going to turn the heat down. So nothing negative should be staying in your life. You should be able to deal with it, kick it out by faith. Our problem is we get stuck on the fact that it comes. Y'all understand what I mean by that? Okay? So something comes that shouldn't be there. Okay? You got a scorpion walking on your floor and you got this big hammer and he's walking towards your child and you sitting there it's a scorpion in the house it's a scorpion in the house it's a scorpion but pl please how long are you going to sit there and talk about the scorpion before you stomp it And so we get stuck on the fact that attacks come. So they fired you. So do you crawl up in the bed for three months and get depressed? And, or do you get up the next day and say, devil, you a lie, God's got a better job for me. Paying more. Don't get stuck on the fact that they fired you. So she left you. Don't get stuck on the fact that she left you. God loves you more than she ever will. Come on. Walk in your authority. What are you dealing with? Bills? Pray in the spirit. If it's, if it's important enough to think about, it's important enough to pray in tongues about. You should not be living from payday to payday. If you are, there's something wrong in the atmosphere. So let's, let's deal with it. As people of faith, deal with it. So run through, run through the rampant. Okay, I know I'm not supposed to be living from payday to payday. Okay, let me, let me check uh, my lifestyle according to the word of God. I'm a tither, yes. Giver, yes. Okay, I work, yes. Okay, now I'm going to pray in the spirit. I'm going to give a little bit extra, and I'm going to call in my manifestation. And I'm going to rebuke the devil, tell him to get out of my life. I'm supposed to be living rich. I'm supposed to be prosperous. And I double-dog dare you to pray in the spirit every day 
about what you're dealing with. Don't like your mate? I challenge you to pray an hour in tongues for them every day. I challenge you to do it for 30 days and not fall in love with them. Because what's going to happen is in, in all the 30 days of the one hour prayer, God's going to clean you up. He may not change them, but he sure going to change you. You have power in your seed of faith, potential to get rid of the devil in every situation you're facing. He's going to attack you. He's going to block you. He's going to block your applications. When you try to get a house, he's going to stop, try to stop you. When you try to get a car, he's going to stop you. When you do get blessed, he's going to try to stop you. Understand when you get blessed, he's coming after you. He's going to want to try to push you off course because he don't want you to stay in the blessing. He's going to try to get you in anger, strife, because he understands if he gets you in anger and strife, that blessing is going to be shooting out the door. How are you going to heat your house with all the windows and the doors open? Every time you're in strife, unforgiveness, mad at somebody, complain about something somebody did, your windows are open. Praise God. Close the window. When you are blessed, people are going to attack you. One of the definitions of to be blessed is to be envied. If you don't know what the word envy means, they're mad because you're blessed. And they're not spiritual enough to understand that if I trust God, he'll bless me too. It's enough blessings for all of us. Cain killed Abel. He was angry because Abel was blessed. And God said, why are you mad? Why don't you just do what Abel was doing? And even though God told him what to do, he still didn't do it. He was so mad, he went out and killed him. You see somebody blessed and you're mad about it? Get close to them and say, what you doing? Stop being a hater. Say, there's potential in my seed. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can, not Jesus can, you can say, it didn't say pray to this mountain. Say to this mountain. You can start commanding some things. Command that mountain to move. Your words have power. The fruit of your words have power. That's why you got to stop saying what you're seeing. Dr. J just don't know. He ain't no good. He ain't doing me no good. He's not a good husband. I was like, will you please stop describing what you're seeing? Well, what can I do? Start saying what you want to see. Women get mad when I tell them that. Start saying, he's a mighty man of God, Dr. J. Pray for me. Pray for me. He's a mighty man of God. Ooh, that's a good man. Ooh, that's a good man. And then when he make you mad, say, you are a mighty man of God. You are such a good man. And when he hits your body, say, ooh, I'm healed. Ooh, I'm feeling so good today. I'm walking in divine hell. Really walking in it. I'm walking in it. See, you just don't know. They said I had this. And then... You know, you know what that does to you, don't you? You know, you get all these, and this is the symptom. I said, well, hold, hold, hold. By the time you give me your testimony, I'm going to have your disease. <laughs> I don't watch illness TV through you. 
And I'm going to bring you the tumor in the jar. No, don't bring me the tumor in the jar. And they said it's going to lead to this, and they said it might lead to this. And this. I'm like, please stop. Can you tell me what God is going to do? Can you tell me what God is doing? Can you tell me what he's saying to you? Can you tell me what he did before? Because if he did it before, he'll do it again. Can you give me a testimony? How he healed somebody else? Can you meditate on what God is doing? If you say with your own mouth what you want to say and tell that thing to move, it will, God said. It will, God said. God said it will. Look at your neighbor and say, God said it will. Come on, you're going to brag on him. Say, God said it will. And when God says it will, it what? It will move. And nothing, and nothing, and nothing shall be impossible. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Stand to your feet. Nothing will be impossible to you. Get up your courage, build your faith up, and go start kicking some devil butts. Kickbox the devil with the word of God. Put him out of your house. If your kids is acting up, pray in tongues for them. If they're acting up on the job, pray for them. Don't cry about it. Don't worry. Pray for them. Pray for one another. And say what you want to see. Say what God is saying about you. You don't know how powerful you are. Some of you are some great, great historic generals in the faith. I know you don't see it now. You feel like I'm just some person in the audience, just some small member. But there are some of you, your anointing is greater than T.D. Jakes, Bill Winston. Some of you here tonight but until you start applying this word, using your faith, stop saying what you see, and start growing in faith, you'll never see it. God needs you. He needs your anointing. There's some people waiting on you to walk in your gift. Amen? Tonight is healing and deliverance. I hope you've heard this word. And understand that God gave his son to die so you could be healed. That's how bad he wants you to be healed. It's not work for you. All you have to do is receive what he's already done. It's a finished work. Jesus said it's finished on the cross. He healed you 2,000 years ago. Now all you got to do is, re is receive it and block out all that stuff that they've told you that's been ringing around in your head. Or what you see in your physical body because it does not override the word of God. And so we're going to thank God. And I want you tonight, when you come up, don't feel like, well, I shouldn't come up. They're going to think that I don't have faith if I come up for prayer. Don't listen to the devil. We're all one family. We all have our challenges. Come up. Let the ministry team who's been anointed and what we mean by anointed is Dr. C and I have laid hands on them so that the anointing that's on us is now on them. So it ain't got to be, I want to lay hand, we lay hands by the pastor. Well, that you are being hands laid by the pastor because we've anointed them as many pastors under us. So come up. Let them touch and agree. And I want you to practice your faith tonight. Don't come up saying, Lord, heal me. Come up saying, I receive it already it's already been done for me now i receive it okay he doesn't need to give it to you it's already been given now receive your healing receive your deliverance every symptom flu symptom cold symptom aches pains knees back 
head, heart, even your emotions. If you've been hurt today and you're sad, let go of all of that as you come up and let them touch and agree with you and receive your deliverance. I believe it's done. In Jesus' name, everybody say in Jesus' name. Come on up, ministry team. Let's thank God. Praise God. Please come now. If you want someone to touch and agree with you, dealing with anything in your life, come on up now. Amen. Again, don't be a straggler. Just come on up now. Come on up quickly. Amen. Praise God. Come believe it. Come believe it. Praise God. Praise God. Now, here's what the Word of God says in Mark 11, 24. It says, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe you have received it, and you shall have it. What's going to happen now as you come? Don't start praying till I release you. Amen. Uh, as you come for prayer, give them your request. And then as they pray and speak the word to you, then you believe that you have received. And here's what's going to happen. That thing that you had when you came up, as soon as they pray, God's going to start taking that thing away. Amen? It's going to happen just that quick. Amen? So believe that you receive it. That's faith. Amen? Believe that you receive it. Amen? So now I want you to connect with the, the ministry team person. Come on up now to them. Give them your prayer request. Man, those of you that are at your seat, let's be in faith. Pray in the Spirit. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Praise God. If you don't have someone to pray with, connect with another team member, ministry team. If you don't have someone to pray with, connect with another member. Man, let's enter into agreement. That's good.
team members, if any of you need prayer, connect with other members of the team. Any of you that are ministry, if you need ministry at this time, won't you just go down and just be let the ministry team members minister to you. Amen. Everyone standing at this time. Praise God. Praise God. Let's thank God for the victory. Thank God. If that's, that's your victory, clap that. Let's thank God for the victory. Victory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. If we have any first-time guests, I'd like to release you to go to our hospitality center at this time. Uh, and uh, we have refreshments for you, a free gift we want to give you. So if you're here for the very first time, uh, just come out into the aisles and someone will direct you to the hospitality center. They're waiting to receive you. Uh, I'm going to ask my altar counselors to come forward. Praise God. Uh, if you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, uh, don't leave tonight without receiving the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our altar counselors will be available at the front of the sanctuary. And uh, they can lead you in a prayer of salvation or a prayer of rededication. You want to rededicate your life to the Lord. Come and see them. Uh, if you filled out the card to become a member or you have any questions about membership, see the young lady all the way over to my left. and She can assist you in becoming a member of EOC. Amen? Praise God. I believe that's it. Praise God. Great night. Father, we just thank you so much for our time together tonight. Thank you for the word of faith. And Father, we want that mustard seed faith that gives us the ability to speak the mountains and they move. Nothing will be impossible for us because we're people of faith. Father, we trust 
in you. As we leave this place, Father, release your angels to go before us, provide safe passage as we go to our homes and our different destinations. Father, as we end our denial and some have fasted today, Father, we call our meals blessed in Jesus' name. Father, we return to give your name praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Don't forget, intercessors, please come and see Dr. J up front uh, for just a couple of minutes. Please come and see her. Her three folks say, build up your faith. You will move mountains and tell them.